So last week I was working on a React server component application that uses query params. In the process, I came across this type for query params. And when I first saw this, I was a little surprised. You know, this isn't the first thing that comes to mind when I think of query params, uh, but it turns out this is a type for query params. And in this video, we are gonna build up to this type from scratch and explain away all the little pieces here. So to get us started, we have this very simple Next13 server component. It takes in search params here and it console logs them. So if we open up our console and we refresh this page, we can see we get search params and it's an empty object. But if we come over here and we add a param to the URL, something like greeting hi, we will see that our search params now has a greeting with a value hi. So let's use that greeting search param to customize our greeting message. So we'll say search params dot greeting world. And if we save, we get the message hi world. Okay, now one thing about our component is we are using an any to type our search params. And I wanna start to build out this type now. So instead of any, we are gonna say search params is an object and that object has a greeting that's a string. And just to make sure this didn't break our app, we can come over here and we'll just edit our greeting and we see our new greeting message. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna print the number of characters in the greeting. So we'll add a new line and we'll say the greeting is search params dot greeting dot length characters. And we can see everything's working. We're told our greeting is three characters. But it turns out we have a bug here, and I can show you that by deleting this query param. And now the app crashes with this error, cannot read properties of undefined while reading length. And that's because since our greeting is now undefined, undefined has no length property, and we get this error. Now, this is generally the type of error that I would expect TypeScript to catch and it didn't catch it because of uh, something we did. We told TypeScript that greeting would always exist and it would be a string, but in reality, greeting might not be there. So if we go ahead and we turn this into an optional value, well, right away we can see a TypeScript error. And if we mouse over this, TypeScript is telling us that greeting is possibly undefined. And there we go, there's TypeScript giving us the feedback we need. And the fix for this is to just not call length if greeting is undefined. So if we save this, we get a message, the greeting is blank characters. Let's go ahead and default this to zero. So the greeting is zero characters when there's no greeting. Okay, let's go back to the URL with our custom greeting. And I also wanna add a query param up here that allows us to customize the location. So instead of saying world, we can say something like location equals earth. And in order to get that to show up, we will use search params dot location. Now, once we save, we can see we get the right message. We get a high earth message over there, but we have a TypeScript error. And TypeScript is telling us that this location property does not exist on our search params. And the fix for this is pretty simple. We can come up here and add location is a string. And there we go. The TypeScript error goes away. And if we save, our app still works. But if you think about what we just did, we didn't actually fix this TypeScript error by improving our code. We fixed it by editing a type. And the whole point of TypeScript, the whole point of TypeScript is to tell us when we have potential bugs in our code. So if we get a TypeScript error, we should have to improve our code to make that TypeScript error go away. If all we're doing is tweaking a type, it's worth asking ourselves, well, did a bug ever exist in the first case? And in our situation, in this case here, there was no actual bug that existed. We're just adding a location property to search params to make TypeScript happy. We're not doing it to improve our code or fix any bugs. But that's an indicator that the problem lies with the type and not with the code. You know, here we're saying that our only inputs for search params are greeting and location, but that's not exactly true because I can come over to this URL and I can add a query param like a equals a. And when I run this, here, let's continue to make this a little bigger. When I run this and I pop open the console down here, 
Well, guess what? We're going to see that this component receives a query param of A equals A. So this type up here, this search params type, is actually wrong because we're actually getting more data than we're claiming. So if we think about this, really for search params, we take any search params because anyone can come over here and they can always just keep appending search params onto the URL. And so we need to capture that in our type. And it turns out that TypeScript has a way to express this, and that is with an index signature. We can say that search params is an object and every single key in that object is a string and its values are going to be strings or undefined. And by defining this index signature, we are now able to cover all possible query param inputs to this component, including location and greeting. So we can just delete these. Now, the really cool thing about this is that we can now access any single query param. So we can say search params dot a and TypeScript won't error. It is going to allow this, but this provides more information than in any, because if we try to access a property like length, now we get a TypeScript error. And the TypeScript error is that search params dot a is possibly undefined. So these index signatures are a really cool type to say that we can accept anything, but they might be undefined. So if you try to access properties off of the anything, you need to deal with that. Okay, let's go ahead and let's just clean this up a little and let's go back to our URL and let's just clear out all the query params. And the next thing I wanna show you about query params is that did you know that query params can also be expressed as arrays? And the way you do that is by duplicating a param in the URL. So if I say list equals A and list equals B and list equals C, this query param is going to be passed in as an array to our component. In fact, if we open up the console, we can see our list is in fact an array with values A, B, and C. Okay, so let's take that list and on a new line, let's print out all the items in the list. So we're gonna do search params dot list dot join, and we'll just do a comma join. Once we save, we can see ABC is printed correctly on the page, but we've got some TypeScript errors we got to deal with. And the first one is search params.list is possibly undefined. Well, we know how to fix that one. And then the second error is on this join function. And it says property join does not exist on type string. And that's because we've said that our search params can only be strings or undefined, but they can also be arrays of strings. So we'll add a new type here saying they can be an array. Now that didn't fix the error. So if we come back down to join, we can see a new error here that says join does not exist on the union type of string and string array. And that is a legitimate error that TypeScript is catching because if there's only ever one list in the URL, then the query param is gonna be treated as a string. And so this is pretty cool. We're starting to get some compile time feedback from TypeScript based on how we're using our query params. Okay, the fix for this is going to be to just make sure that list is an array. So we're gonna use array.isArray, and we will pass in search params.list, and if it is, we will call this join function. All right, let's go ahead and save, and we can see when we're not dealing with an array, we get no message, but if we go back to the page, that has that list of query params in the URL, we get everything working. And so there you have it. This is a type that covers all query params. Uh, this is a type that we started out the video with and we were able to kind of rebuild it, showing all the ways we could access query params. And in the end, we end up with a type that allows us to use query params in our component and start getting a really helpful feedback from TypeScript about when we're gonna run into an error. Now, you might have some questions about this type. I think one of the first things that came up when I looked at this was, well, what about numbers, right? We've covered a string and array of strings, but what happens if we go to a URL that does something like, you know, number equals five? Well, let's print this out on a new line. We can do search params dot number, and we'll say is a, and we'll ask the JavaScript to show us its type. 
And this is interesting. Here, we get a message that says five is a string. Now, this is surprising because we think of five as a number, not a string, but there's a good reason for why this is showing up as a string. And that is because when we take a full URL, a full URL like this, it starts off as a string. And when we hand this off to the web server, the web server is gonna split up all these different pieces and package up these query params. But since the whole URL started off as a string, the web server doesn't know if we meant the number five or the string five, and it's just gonna treat every single query param as a string. And then we as web developers have the tools to turn strings into numbers. So we can use parsint if we wanted to turn this string into the number five. You know, another way to visualize this is imagine you were trying to put a date as a query param. You would do something like date equals 2023.05.01. And this would be a string representation of a date that you would then use a JavaScript library to parse and turn into a real date. And so because of this, all query parameters are going to be strings or array of strings. And it's up to us as developers to handle the serialization and deserialization of those strings into more finer objects. So the next thing that I wanna talk about with this type is should we as web developers know this type? Should we just be able to rattle this type off the top of our heads? I mean, after all, we deal with query params a handful of times a month. And the answer here, I think, is no. This is a type that comes from the frameworks we're using. Ultimately, Next.js is the one invoking this component, so Next.js is the one in charge of this type. In fact, I originally found this type in the Next.js docs. We can see right here, we see the type for search params. And I think most of the time when you're writing framework code, you should not be responsible for writing these types. Uh, these types are gonna come from the docs. In fact, I kind of went through something similar that I went through in this video where I was just trying to get the type for search params right, couldn't quite figure it out, came over here to the docs, saw this, and it dawned on me, oh, okay, this is a type I should be using, pasted it into my page component, and everything worked. So I hope you found that helpful. And I'll see you in the next one.